Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Coming up in the news this week, I visit the hives, B, Ben visits the seafood section in Morrison's Fish, and I visit Monkey World, Macaque, Starting off the news this week, a study has been published in the journal Proceedings of the Royal Society B that has detailed the discovery of the biggest plant in the world. Researchers had originally set out to work out how many singular plants of ribbonweed made up the 77 square mile area of the coast of Australia, but found that this underwater meadow, much to their surprise, was in fact just the one plant. The plant is particularly notable for its resilience, being able to survive in a wide range of temperatures and other environmental conditions. The researchers estimate that it has taken four and a half thousand years to reach its current size. In other news, a study has been published in the journal Molecular Phylogenetics and Evolution detailing the discovery of a new species of macaque called Macaca celli. The species was discovered in northern India by the University of Calcutta and is thought to have evolved from Macaca munzala around 2 million years ago, another recently discovered species in the region. The study overall goes further in its research into macaques and hopes to understand the range and behaviour of different species to help protect those that are endangered and even those that are not. And now over to Ben, who, as you may have noticed last week, is sporting a completely different torso. Thanks, Doug. First up in the news this week is yet another study on everyone's favourite giant shark, Megalodon. This time, a study has examined the geochemistry of fossil teeth from both this shark and from the great white shark, looking specifically at the differences in zinc isotopes in the tooth enameloid between them. Zinc isotopes, it turns out, are incredibly good indicators of these animals' trophic levels, and therefore their positions within the ecosystem. The researchers found that there were significant differences between the zinc isotopes among populations of both sharks, suggesting that dietary shifts occurred during the neogene in both these shark species. Additionally, it seems that the earliest great white sharks, which coexisted with Megalodon, occupied a very similar trophic level, suggesting that competition with these animals could very well have contributed to the extinction of these massive fish. Also in this week's Paleo News is a fascinating study investigating the metabolic rate of extinct organisms. By using a type of spectroscopy to quantitatively measure a correlate for metabolic rate in bones from living and extinct animals, the researchers were able to show that endothermy, or warm-bloodedness, independently evolved in mammals and plesiosaurs, while it's also the ancestral condition for ornithodirons as a whole, the group including pterosaurs and dinosaurs. So higher metabolic rates were ancestral to pterosaurs, ornithischians, theropods and sauropods, but then, interestingly, it seems that ornithischian dinosaurs reduced their metabolic rate more towards ectothermy. The study also finds that the giant sauropods and theropods were not gigantotherms, as some had proposed, but true endotherms instead. Increasing endothermy also evolved along the avian lineage, but the widespread occurrence of this type of metabolism among many groups that lived at the end of the Cretaceous therefore seems to suggest that factors other than metabolic rate must have determined which groups survived and which went extinct at the end of the period. Some amazing papers this week then. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you Ben. Well that's it for this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed and we'll see you on Sunday. <laughs>